Today I'm going to answer a question from a student who goes by uh, that name. And the question is essentially, in my series of videos on operational amplifiers, I talk about the inverting amplifier and the non-inverting amplifier. And in one video I say that if the two feedback resistors are equal, the circuit has a gain of one. And in the other video I say that if the two feedback resistors are equal, I have a gain of two. Well, is there some mistake or what's going on here? Well, let's take a look at the two circuits and see what's going on here. So, let's take a look at the inverting amplifier first. Let's set up the operational amplifier. I like to put the non-inverting input at the bottom and the inverting input at the top. And let's put the power supplies in here. In fact, I'm just going to run this to a battery momentarily just to remind us of how the circuit is working. We have two batteries, which are probably more likely to be a couple of power supplies, but that will represent two batteries. Let's make these 10 volts each just because I can. I can make them up as high as around 18 volts for your typical op amp or somewhere about there. You have to look at the specs to see what you can do. And of course, uh, usually with op amps, we have a split power supply. So our ground is going to be at the junction between the two batteries or two power supplies. Now there are some op amps that uh, can operate with only one battery, but we're not talking about that right now. So we're just going to assume that we have two power supplies or two batteries. So we have uh, plus 10 volts here and minus 10 volts there. And that's what's supplying power to it. And the important thing about that is this gives us our output voltage limits for what the uh, amplifier can do. Now let's get these out of the way now and just uh, show the essential parts of the circuit. Before I go all the way there, let's just show that I have my plus 10 volts here and my minus 10 volts there. So that's our power supply. And since that's not essential to looking at the circuit, they just kind of get in the way. So just remember that is our power to the circuit there. So let's get rid of those guys. So this is an inverting amplifier. So our non-inverting input is going to go to ground. So the point between the two batteries or power supplies. And from the output, we are going to have our feedback network, which consists of two resistors. And that will go to the input for the circuit. And the junction between the two resistors will go to the inverting input of the op amp. So input, output, what's this op amp going to do? Well, if you haven't done so already, be sure to watch the series on operational amplifiers because I go into great detail about how these work. But essentially what an op amp does is it changes its output voltage to whatever it takes to keep the two input voltages equal. And the other thing to remember is that if the voltage at the inverting input is higher than the voltage at the non-inverting input, the output voltage is going to tend to go down and will continue to go down until the two voltages become equal. And if the voltage at the non-inverting input is higher than the voltage at the inverting input, the output voltage will tend to go up and will continue to go up until the two input voltages are equal, assuming that it can reach some voltage where they do become equal. So that's the essential idea of how the operational amplifier works. So let's see what this circuit does. Let's simply put, how about plus two volts here. And I haven't set some resistors here. We're talking about them being equal. So let's just make them 10K each. So what we have here is a series circuit. Remember that the impedance of the op amp input is so high that essentially no current flows in there. So we can ignore that part of the circuit as far as current flow. The definition of a series circuit is a circuit with only one current path. There's our one current path from the input to the output of the operational amplifier or vice versa. The operational amplifier can either sink or source current. So current can flow out of the amplifier or current can flow in as needed to make the circuit work. So what is the voltage going to be on the output of this circuit? So we have plus two volts in. The voltage here is going to be whatever it takes to make these two inputs equal. So what's the voltage here? Ground by definition is zero volts. What's that mean? It means we have our black lead of our voltmeter at that point or our ground lead of our oscilloscope or whatever. 
And so all of our voltages are measured from that point. So that is zero. And we'll get the clutter out of the way here. So the op amp is going to make this voltage whatever it takes to make these equal, which means it will change it until it sees zero volts there. So this isn't some magical thing that the op amp does at this end. The op amp is changing this voltage until this voltage equals that voltage. So what voltage do we need here to make this zero volts? Well, we have two volts here and a 10K resistor. So we start with plus two volts and we end up at here zero volts because that's connected there. So it means we started with two volts, we lost two volts. This is a series circuit and if the voltage is going down this way, it has to continue to go down. And the two resistors are equal. What's the rule in a series circuit? If the resistors are equal, the voltage is equal. What's the current flowing through there? Don't really care, I could calculate it out. I'm not even going to think about it. I don't need to know that at this point. I know that if the resistors are equal in a series circuit, that the voltages will be equal. So if I have, let's just draw that. If I have two volts here, so I start with two and I lose two, I have to lose two more volts here. So two minus two equals zero, minus two equals. So in order to balance this out, this circuit had to put negative two volts on the output. And so that's where the magic is. It uh, changes this until it sees that equal. Once they're equal, it stops moving. And so it took minus two volts to balance out the plus two volts here. You can kind of think of it like a little bit of a seesaw or something. If this goes up, that goes down. If this goes down, that goes up. And because these are equal, they go up and down equal amounts. So two volts in equals two volts out. I have a gain of one. If the output is the same as the input, the gain is one. So my gain equals one. Well, not exactly because since this is the opposite polarity, it'll always be the opposite polarity. Remember, if this goes up, that goes down. If that goes down, this goes up and it pivots around the zero. So they're always going to be opposite polarity. That's why it's an inverting amplifier. It inverts the input. Whatever the output is, it's the inverse of the input. So we're going to say it has a gain of minus one. But with equal resistors, I had a gain of, well, at least an absolute gain of one. So with the inverting amplifier, if the two resistors are equal, my gain is one. So what about the non-inverting amplifier? Well, it works a little differently. They look very similar. So I'm just going to erase what I need to here to make the non-inverting amplifier. I'll leave the voltages the same. That's going to change. This is actually, I can't leave that voltage the same because that's one of the things I need to change. So now, to make this a non-inverting amplifier, I have to, instead of grounding this input, I ground over here. So I moved where my zero volts is. So is that going to change the way the circuit works? Of course it is. Now my input goes directly to my non-inverting input. So let's put that plus two volts here now. Now what the circuit has to do is change the output to whatever it takes to make the two inputs equal. Well, this is plus two volts. It's going to do whatever it takes here to make this plus two volts. So what did it have to do here to make that plus two volts? Well, what do we have here again? A series circuit. So once again, the current path is only through here. Current can flow either direction, but only one possible path. So this follows all the series circuit rules, which means here resistor is equal voltages will be equal. So let's see what voltages we have to deal with here. There's zero volts there. And what's the voltage here? Let's, it's plus two volts at that point. So I've gone from zero to plus two volts. That's a gain of two volts. So I started with zero and I went two volts higher. Series circuit, so if I go higher this way, I have to continue to go higher. The voltages have to be equal, so I have zero volts, I gain two volts, I gain two more volts. Zero volts plus two, two more. The two plus two is four, plus four volts here to make it two volts there. So if we look here, as we see that this is a voltage divider, 
What's the rule about voltage dividers? If we have equal resistors, the voltage between the resistors will be half of the starting voltage. So here's our starting voltage, four volts. Equal resistors, we end up with two volts here. There it is. So in order to balance this out, the op amp had to put four volts on the output to get two volts here to match the two volts there. So now I put two volts in, I got four volts out, so I had a gain of two. So the circuits look very similar. They both have equal resistors, but yet one has a gain of one, minus one really. This one has a gain of two. So similar circuits, but there's no mistake, the non-inverting amplifier will have a gain of two if the resistors are equal, but the inverting amplifier will have a gain of one if the resistors are equal. Now, for those of you who like formulas, let's go ahead and throw a formula here. I don't like to focus on the math because I want you to learn the concepts. The math, you can plug in the numbers anytime you want. Here, we're going to learn the concepts of the circuits, but here we're going to tie them together and just show the formula for this. And that is going to be the voltage gain, or A sub V, equals one plus, this is R2, R1, R2 divided by R1. So that's just a formula that gives us the numbers based on what we just already did. It's all just Ohm's law, series circuit rules, voltage divider rules, and what the op amp does. And the result of that is we can calculate the gain with that formula. So if these two resistors are equal, that's going to end up being two. One plus the ratio of the resistors. What's the ratio? One to one, the ratio is one. One plus one equals two. So if they're equal, we end up with a gain of two. If R2 is bigger, let's make that 20K. Well, then it's going to be a two to one ratio plus one makes that a gain of three. So that's how it works with the uh, non-inverting amplifier. Now for the inverting amplifier, should I redraw it? Yeah, it'll only take a second. The inverting amplifier, this goes to ground. That becomes our input and the gain Formula for this one is our gain, our A sub V equals simply R2 over R1. Almost, because it's an inverting amplifier, because the output is always the opposite polarity of the input, we're going to put a little minus sign here. So it still works. R2, R1 goes into R2, that gives us the gain, but that flips the polarity, so that's the formula for the inverting amplifier. So almost the same formula, but we add one to the gain of the non-inverting amplifier because of the way it works. We don't add one to the gain of the inverting amplifier, but we do have to put a minus sign on there to remind us that the polarity gets changed. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.